Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and with us today, we have a special guest, one of the 74 club past presidents, Anselmo Moreno. Welcome, Anselmo. Thank you, Wade. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I'm born and raised in Bakersfield, California, first generation Mexican American. My mom and dad both hail from Mexico. Um, and I just I grew up in Bakersfield. I was educated in Bakersfield. And then 10 years ago, I started my own uh, private credit consulting practice in Bakersfield. And I'm probably going to be in Bakersfield for the rest of my life. So what part of Mexico is your family from? Actually, my dad is from Guanajuato. Oh, and Guanajuato. My mom is from Colima. Oh, OK, great, great. So uh, tell us, how you got involved with Rotary? About six years ago, uh, at a business networking meeting, I, I met past president Robin Paggi, and she invited me to Rotary, and I didn't know what it was. Robin is one of those individuals that is very difficult to say no to. She's very <laughs> persuasive. So I said yes. I attended a Rotary meeting, and I knew a few people there, and I just felt right at home. And I figured, well, I'm going to come back. And then I came back. Eventually, I joined the club. And next thing you know, a few years later, I'm drinking the Rotary Kool-Aid, I'm <laughs> president-elect, and I'm just having a really good time meeting a lot of new, fun people and doing a lot of great work for the community. Great. Now, your club's fairly new. It hasn't been around a heck of a long time. So was that kind of uh, one of the factors that you think drew you in? Not a lot of tradition, but you get to create tr the tradition. Not quite. I, at the time, I didn't quite appreciate the fact that the club was new and mm -hmm. didn't have tradition. You know, when I talk about my club, I like to refer to it as a new club but we're not new Rotarians, meaning that most of our Rotarians, especially our charter Rotarians, came from another club. So they bring that experience of being in Rotary with them, which really kind of gives our club that identity and that compass that we need to make sure that we stay true to Rotary traditions. Got it. So there was a little bit of a, a guiding light there helping you get right, through the process. Right, absolutely. Okay. Um, as far as new Rotarians, then, would it be a 50-50 mix? You know, at this point, we're on our eighth year as a club. And I would say at this point, yes, we do have about a 50-50 mix. Uh, right now we have 36 members and it's very simple to say about 18 of them are past Rotarians from the old club and 18 of them are Rotarians that we've picked up along the years. Now, be honest with me on this one here. Um, when you were invited into Rotary, was there a specific role, goal, something that attracted you to it that was, I would say, something personal? A business, really. Business. Um, okay. You know, I I, uh, I say that often. It's just that business brought me to Rotary. I saw opportunity for business. I just kind of saw connections, and it's just being self-employed. You know, it's about meeting people and creating good networks. And so that originally was what attracted me to Rotary. Um, but it really, you know, business is a byproduct of the relationships and the friendships that you create when you're in Rotary. Um, as far as friends, um, for me, um, I spent so much time in Rotary that. I would say just about all my friends are Rotarians. Right. How's that to you? Similar? The, ma the majority of my friends are Rotarians. Um, it's just a byproduct of the people that you enjoy spending time with. Sure. And when you collaborate, you get to know people on a deep level and you get to understand them. And, sure. you know, eventually Rotary has a lot of social activities. We travel together. We do good work together. We problem solve together. We even fundraise together. Yeah. And all of those things require time outside of work and even outside of Rotary. Well, one common bond is the that desire, that passion to serve. Right. So I think that's a, a true bonding uh, element in itself. Was there anything specific that we call it a rotary moment that you've ha had actually thinking about that rotary moment? Oh, absolutely. Tell us a little uh, bit my about rotary that. moment will never leave me, obviously. Uh, it was, I was elected during Robin Padgett's year, my sponsor, to be community service director. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into, right? I was quite intimidated. So the day, July 1st, was essentially the first day of the Rotary year. And on the news, I saw that they were running a story on a young lady who had been accepted to a prestigious Princeton program, but she couldn't afford the trip to go for the summer. And I just realized that that young lady was in our Interact Club at Miramonte High School, the, the high school that we sponsor at Twilight Rotary. So the news story was about her selling burritos for her tuition and so they even had a moniker for it tortillas for tuition and i said you know that little girl's onto something she's not out asking for a handout she's actually selling burritos to raise money for her tuition so i said okay this is a first service opportunity we're going to round up the club i sent out an email hey everybody let's buy burritos from esperanza well nobody wanted to buy burritos 
But everybody said, I'll give 50 bucks, and I'll give 100 bucks, and I'll give 20 bucks. And next thing you know, we have $3,000 raised wow. for Esperanza. The next day, she was going to be fundraising at a Starbucks, playing drums for donations. So we just kind of bombarded her publisher clearinghouse style with a giant check. <laughs> we had informed the news of our what we were going to do. So the news was there, captured the moment on the local media. Um, and she just it was in tears. And then everybody was in tears. And then it made the local news. And we really changed her life. She got True. to go to Princeton. And every year, she sends me a note thanking us. And so, you know, that, that was really the first Rotary moment. That's when I realized the power of the collective network of all of our Rotarians. Nobody, I mean, we would have bought burritos, right? But we just did so much more because we could. <laughs> that is great. Now, that's one uh, great aspect, great story, by the way. Um, tell us a little bit about what made you decide on being a president. That's uh, a big step. It is a big step. Um, well, they, you know, they ask you so far in advance that it's difficult to say no because they give you so much time to prepare. True. Um, you know, I, I, I was tapped on, I remember the fall of 2013, to serve 2015, 2016. Well, at the time, 2015 seemed so far away. I said, yeah, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll make it work. And, but next thing you know, I blinked and 2015 was here. <laughs> right. um, so really, I, just, uh, I was flattered, actually, that they chose me. Um, so I, I really couldn't say no. And I, I like challenges. Um, I knew that it was going to be challenging, but that I knew that I was going to have the support around me to make sure that I didn't fall flat on my face. True. You do have an awesome club and very supporting. So um, organizing, time, business, and also the Rotary uh, obligations. How difficult was that part of it? You know what? It, it was quite challenging. Luckily, my business is not new, and so it's well established, and I didn't have to kind of worry about the business. The business, you know, kind of runs itself for the most part. So that allowed me the flexibility that I needed to do Rotary. Plus, our Rotary Club meets in the evenings, so it really oh, is sorry. after hours, and sometimes it's really nice. After work, you go to the Twilight Club, have a beverage, and just enjoy the camaraderie there with the Rotarians. So I think the timing was right for us, um, and it worked out very well. It's just about time management. We do our best, and we make it work. That is true, and I never thought about that. We're a morning club, and so you know we're, we're kicking ourselves off. We're starting it up, revving it up for the day, whereas you're just the opposite. You get to wind it down right. and relax a little bit. We have to we consider changing. We right literally <laughs> wind it down. <laughs> no, I like that idea. Um, you brought some pictures with us. If, if you wouldn't mind sharing those, uh, looks like one of the great events, beer pong. So tell us a little bit about that. You know, I had this crazy idea. Well, actually, when I was tapped on the shoulder to do be president, they said, by the way, our fundraiser pretty much has hit its shelf life, so you're going to have to come up with a new one. Uh, so I spent a lot of time uh, brainstorming a lot of fundraising ideas, and finally it just kind of hit me that we were going to transform what, the perception of Rotary by doing a beer pong tournament in our community. Ever since I was a Rotarian, all of our fundraisers were some kind of dinner, sit-down dinner, where the only people that went there were Rotarians. And I really wanted to change that because I, I needed to stop taxing our club. Hey, everybody, please buy tickets to our dinner and then only we show up, right? right? right. So we really needed to do something that tapped the community and the Rotarians worked it and the community bought in. I just had the idea of beer pong. I thought that it, nobody else was doing it. I think that was the number one thing is nobody was doing it. We had no beer pong tournaments in Bakersfield. so. Next thing you know, I run it by our, our board. I run it by our foundation board. People started to like the idea. I had to sell it a little bit. So <laughs> there's a couple of pictures of us actually playing beer pong at a club meeting because nobody knew what beer pong was, actually. So I actually had to That's show true. people what beer pong was. So we had a couple sample games. And the next thing you know, everybody bought in. And next thing you know, we're having a beer pong tournament, <laughs> huge fundraiser in Bakersfield. And that was an incredible experience. Just organizing it. Um, going through the fear of what if we fall flat on our face? What if nobody comes? You know, what if it's just us there playing beer pong? Uh, to promoting the event, selling the event, really watching it build traction. I'll tell you, I was so impressed with the way that this event sold. We single-handedly sold this entire event out on Facebook. Oh, really? So it's just wow. the power of social media that got 350 participants to this event uh, in June. Participants. Uh, participants. Not, not just including spectators, everything. That's participants. Well, actually, 128 participants, okay. and then the rest were spectators. Okay. I correct myself. Got it. Okay, yeah. no problem. Uh, next picture you have shows, it uh, looks like the, is that the uh, table set up, Sarah? Right, so um, 
The picture, that picture right there that you're seeing is when we're preparing for the beer pong tournament. So what we did, when you play beer pong, you play on a table. So we had 64 teams. So if we were gonna have all teams playing at once, we needed 32 tables. So then we had table sponsors where we had local businesses sponsor a table. And if you can kind of see a little bit on the picture, the graphic of the participating right. sponsor. Right. So we had you know, all the sponsors and they, they, at, the, at the end they got to keep the table with their graphic on there, which is really nice, really nice custom tables. Mm -hmm. And all the participants got to play on a table and that was the exposure for the business. Right, so that's yeah, that's idea. all Twilight Rotarians there that you see participating and lending a hand and setting up the tables the morning of. So what was the uh, sponsorship cost then for those tables? So the table sponsorship cost was $600. Okay. It included, obviously you got to take the table the home. Table. Mm -hmm. It included a team, so you got to submit a team for com okay, competition. Okay, so entry then. Correct, okay. um, and then an entry for a spectator. Ah, great. Then the next picture you have, because um, maybe one of your this is at a club meeting. Okay. And that's a. That's you selling it. That's a local Rotarian <laughs> throwing his first Pong shop for the first time in his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. And then your sponsor, it looks like uh, you got a picture of a, uh, a beer mug here. Right. So uh, entry to the event got you a beer mug. Uh, obviously, it got you beer. And those were our participating breweries that sponsored us with beer. Oh, okay. So we wanted to recognize them in the glass mug that everybody got to nice. take home that day. So that's a commemorative. Custom mug there. The first annual commemorative nice. beer pong tournament glass, yes. Nice, very nice. Then the next picture you have, um, is that the competition starting This there? is competition gameplay. And I'll tell you what, Wade. So we had 64 teams going at once. As the team started to dwindle down and we were down to the semifinals and the finals, I mean, it was competitive, <laughs> right? We had to have security, make sure we were keeping <laughs> the rowdy people at bay. They were, there was roped off. Uh, it was like the semifinals for the NBA. I mean, it was serious competition. <laughs> it was actually highly skilled, too. Once you made it that far, you're actually not just a you know, passive or hobby beer pong player. You're a competitive, mm. professional beer pong player, which it was something we were exposed to. I didn't know people actually competed for I beer pong. I had no idea that yeah, was the Yeah, they, <laughs> they have giant tournaments oh where gosh. people go competitively uh, okay. compete. So it was wow. very neat, um, and that was really fun. Then a lot of people had a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, a lot of the teams came up with fun team names and even made their own t-shirts. There was this team here. So Blood, this, this team here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood, Sweat, and Beers was the team <laughs> name. Okay. And they made up their own shirts. And they were actually like the sweethearts of the competition. Everybody was cheering for them. Unfortunately, they didn't win, but they made it pretty far. Oh, OK, good. Uh, were these teams then from all over, mostly from Bakersfield? Really mostly from Bakersfield. Okay. Um, you know, it was promoted and sold exclusively on Facebook. And that was the point. We wanted to make sure that Rotarians weren't playing beer pong, but that the community was there yeah, right. playing beer pong, right. watching. And the Rotarians just got to serve beer. Okay. Um, and so, and I'm sure a few of them took a couple of sips of it too. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So the next picture you have uh, a group. These are spectators. I'm going to guess. Actually, um, one of the pictures is of the Rotarians at work. So you can ah, see there our okay. current president. Kathleen, uh, Kat Klaus okay. uh, with her beer pong shirt Got it. and her fedora getting ready to serve some beer. You see our Rotarian there, Barry Rosenfeld and right. Brad in the background. They were serving beer. They did a great job that day as volunteers. Good, good. So you actually, uh, was that included or was that additional? Which one? Uh, purchasing the beers. No, actually your ticket entry, which was 50 bucks, essentially gave you unlimited sampling. Uh, so they, were, they weren't full beers. You, you got essentially right. a half glass it's and you got sample. to sample all the beers okay. from the local craft breweries. Um, so, Good, good. Next picture you have shows the a tables getting set up, I presume? Yeah, that was one of the tables. So it was an indoor-outdoor event just to oh, kind okay. of help the flow um, work correctly in our venue. And that's just one, one of the competitive games going on. You can see there that they're almost done. And you actually, actually, that's an action shot. The guy caught the ball. If you actually can see that, that's kind of neat. I just noticed <laughs> that. Um, and it's just one of our many teams. We had a, a whole bunch of fun, and a lot of the teams were very competitive. It was double elimination. So if you lost once, you got to continue until you lost the again. The loser bracket. Mm -hmm. OK, got it. Tell us a little bit about the game, since uh, I've never played beer pong. Beer pong, what it, when I explained it to my Rotarians, they described it to me as our generation's quarters. Have you, are you familiar with quarters? quarters. So yeah. essentially, it's, um, they described it as a frat house drinking game. It's essentially, that's what it is. In college, people play it to get, um, to get drinking, right? <laughs> so if, you, if I make the ball in the cup, you're supposed to drink the beer that's in the cup. 
Um, and people do it until you obviously have drank too much. Well, we kind of obviously flipped the, flipped the game a little bit. There was water in the cups and nobody was forced to drink. Okay. All drinking was obviously voluntary. And so essentially the game was just a matter of marksmanship. Can you make the ball in the cup? And when you, all the cups are cleared, you win or lose, right? Okay. Um, so there was no forced alcohol drinking. A lot of people went there and didn't drink at all, which is totally fine. And in fact, most competition play, professional beer pong play, those are the rules. That was actually a big sticking point was which, what rules are we using? Because a lot of people develop their own house rules. Mm. So we had to make sure that we stuck to what they consider world championship beer pong rules. <laughs> and these are standard okay. world <laughs> league amazing. beer pong rules. So that way, you know, we just had this one set of rule book so nobody can make up their own rules along the way. Got it. So you didn't change it? Didn't put a little Bakersfield We actually didn't. Critical there. All, all the rules that we read were pretty standard. And plus, we figure if you're a beer pong aficionado, right, <laughs> you were familiar with these world series of beer pong rules. Got it. It looks like you start with, uh, what is it, 10 cups, probably? Right. Same there's set 10 as cups. A... There's 10 cups on opposing table lens. They're okay. eight-foot tables, uh -huh. um, and they're in triangle shape. So okay. that's how that gets set up. Set up like uh, bowling pins then. Right. Same, same triangle. Got it. And the, tr the trick is then to, uh, you have to bounce them in or you have to air them in? You can bounce them in and you can air them in. Okay. So you can do either or. Okay, got it. Very good. Next picture, you have, uh, looks like some of your members here. Right. Those are some of our participants and some of our members. Um, and so they just, were, they just had a blast. I mean, at the end of the day, we, the next day, you know, we would just thought back and just realized that everybody had a whole lot of fun. Um, we had nothing but positive reviews, yeah. and it was very encouraging because now we have customers, right? Now we can bring it back bigger, better next year because now we have a customer base. People know about it, and now it won't be the first beer pong. Now it's going to be the second, second annual, annual beer pong event. Very good. So, Next picture we have. Actually, that does show the setup of the table then. Right, yeah, that, that's actually... So we, the, the winners actually took one of these custom tables home uh, oh. So part of creating, you know, the look and identity and feel for the fundraisers, we had to make sure we had a memorable logo. Uh, if you know beer pong, as soon as you see the red solo cups, you know that's a beer pong. It, it alludes to beer pong, and so that's what that is. Um, and so we had a lot of those tables. The, the championship teams, the two first and second place got to take not only cash home, but they also got to take the tables home as well. Nice, nice. Now, are those official tables then? They have specific sizes? Correct. Those are regulation they, size tables, right. yes. And where did you find those? There's actually a, a, a wholesaler that makes them, and he custom printed whatever graphics oh, really? we wanted on there. Okay. They fold up like a briefcase, very portable, very briefcase? lightweight. Yeah, okay. they, they, they fold up very wow. portable. Wow. So uh, they were very nice. That was a very nice find for us <laughs> because is. it really made things simple. Great. Okay. Then the next picture you have uh, shows your banner in the background there. Right, those are two Rotarians there. They're supposed to be working, but they're they pretty sure that's <laughs> beer in their hands. That's actually past president Sandy and my <laughs> sergeant at arms, Garrett. Well, maybe they're serving. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're serving themselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, thank you. And again, another picture of the, uh, the, the cups. That was the front of the cup. So the past picture was of our sponsors, but that was the okay. front side of our glass. Got it. Essentially was our logo. It says nice. Bakersfield Twilight. It's got the rotary wheel in there. We want to make sure that people remember the rotary wheel in the middle and obviously the date and time. Very good. Uh, we have a couple more pictures, three more pictures to be exact here. Um, looks like a trip that you and I took uh, to, to Mexico. Yep. So let's, let's talk about that one. How was that trip and where was it at? That was a fantastic trip. We took that late April and first week of May for our sister districts conference down in San Miguel de Allende, Guanajuato, Mexico. Um, and so it just so happens that my dad's originally from Guanajuato, so going to San Miguel de Allende was easy for me. Plus, after that, I got to go visit family in the area. Nice, so that nice. was really fun. And it was an excellent trip. I mean, you know, we got to hang out. You and I got to hang out over there. Also, my wife joined us right. and a couple right. of other Rotarians from our club. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we had a really large delegation from our district Very large. There. Uh, about the largest we've ever taken. Yeah. I think there's 21 or 22 of us there. I'm pretty sure that the destination has something to do with it. It could be. Uh, but there's good promotion, and you brought a good group with you. That helped right. a lot. Next picture we have uh, shows you and your wife. That's right. That day, one of, <laughs> that was a Saturday, and that was during one of the plenary sessions at the district conference. It was her birthday that day. Nobody knew, but I had to make sure that um, I told Jim 
Jim Bell, past history governor Jim Bell, about it. So he brought it up from the podium during his comments, and then the whole crowd erupted and sang her happy birthday, right. and that it was, was just really memorable. That was great. That was a very good one. Last picture um, was one that I took with you guys. Um, I was up near the stage there and caught you in the audience getting ready for one of the shows. That's a great picture. That's <laughs> myself, my wife, and one of our Rotarians that joined us, Jenny Moore, yeah. on, on the trip, which was just fantastic. Now, was that your first international trip, by a Rotary International trip? Actually, no. I went to the International District Conference uh, in Brazil, Sao Paulo. Oh, okay. So I went Paulo. to Sao Paulo okay. um, in 2015. Okay. Uh, but this was my first one to our sister district in Mexico. Okay. And um, what do you think? How was the outcome? Was it a successful trip? Absolutely. So many friendships were formed. Um, I was actually, we're actually working on finishing up a grant that we started for eye cataract surgery equipment for really needy folks in Irapuato, Mexico. Okay. So they just have a huge backlog of people that need eye cataract surgery. Um, if you don't get that surgery, you can go blind. True. So this long wait list is really important that we put a big dent in it. So the collaboration started in Mexico and the grant has been approved and we're just putting the finishing touches to make sure we get them that equipment hopefully by the end of this year, or right. I'm sorry, by the end of this month. Okay, uh, this month. Yeah. Oh, that is great. Now, there's a group uh, coming in this month also from Mexico, from the same district. I don't know if, uh, have you connected with any of them to see if they're coming? Absolutely. You know, we got treated like royalty when we were down there, yeah. and I just couldn't help but just appreciate the opportunity to reciprocate. They're coming down on Friday, Lee Carter from the San Miguel de Allende Midday Club and Tom from the San Miguel Club as well are coming down on Friday. I'm going to pick them up and drive them to their destination and make sure that we, you know, in some small way reciprocate all of their hospitality that they provided us when we were down there. That's great. Um, I don't know if you heard, but I was in Leon two weeks ago. I didn't. For uh, a conference down there where I was invited to be a speaker. And uh, next month I'll be going to Pátzcuaro, same thing, uh, same district. Very cool. Uh, we're looking at the connecting of trying to get these projects to where they'd be more successful, uh, more efficient, and more prevalent, basically, and working both ways. So there is the opportunity now of having them actually partner up with us, and we are the international hosts then, getting the advantages of those. You know, this is my first international grant that I did with the Irapuato Club, and it's just been an incredible learning experience. Yeah, I've been a Rotarian for six years, and I just feel like I just scratched the surface now that I'm able to see the power of the foundation and the power of the grants and just the tremendous change and impact that we can make for the really needy people down there. Great. Now that you've been a president, you're now past president, looks like you're on a pretty good direction for doing a lot of good things in Rotary. So what do you have in the, in the plans in the future? Any, any ideas, any thoughts? Well. Yes, uh, there's a few things in motion um, right now. I'm taking it a little easy, focusing on my business, focusing on a couple of things that need attention. Uh, but I'm also preparing myself and working with our incoming presidents in our group in our area there in Bakersfield because I'm going to be our group's or our area's assistant governor for incoming district governor John Wise. Oh, great, great. That's a big task. Yes, very, very rewarding, by the way. But I, I feel up to it, and I feel like I have the experience to really make sure that I can, you know, and I, it's fresh, right? I just became a past president, so right. I just had my year. So there's a lot of things when you do a look back that you can go, if I knew this, then I would have, you know, reacted a little differently or planned a little better. Um, and I feel like I can bring that to our incoming president-elects in our area because Bakersfield has six clubs. Right, right. You used to have seven. Yeah. Is there plans of a seventh one coming back? Do you know? Have you heard of any? I don't. I have not heard of any, but curious. it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. That's a very strong uh, Rotary community you have there. Are there any goals, objectives, visions that you see that you could bring uh, a benefit as AG to your presidents and to your clubs? I do. I, I saw a, a lot of our hiccups that we had throughout the year. Right, no year is perfect, so you. You make sure you adjust on the fly, and there's just certain things that you can't expect or you don't expect until you're faced with them. And so I feel like I can bring that insight to all of our club members and say, you know, I'll give you a brief example. Um, every single year we have an all-club meeting. So we're six clubs in town, and every single year in the spring we meet all at once. Um, and then so as we're planning that, we realize, hey, this is an issue that needs attention. This is an issue that needs attention. And we should have 
th that's an opportunity there for growth, and that's an opportunity there to make things better. And I feel like I can bring that little little forecast things better like that for our group two presidents. And I, you know, I'm gonna do my best, and I'm gonna do all, all I can do to make sure that they have a successful year. Good, good. I've seen in the past that um, assistant governors actually kind of set the stage for cooperative efforts between the clubs themselves. And without the bonding by a, an assistant governor, the clubs kind of tend to do their own thing. Yep. Have you thought about any projects or events that you're going to do jointly as the group? My job and my role, I feel, is to facilitate that exact idea. As, all our, as, as we start to meet, I, I'm going to get a head start and make sure that we start to meet early. During my year, we started to meet in May, and I think I want to start to meet more towards early spring okay. and then have recurring visits with all of our just group meetings, whether we go out and you know maybe have a couple of drinks or maybe get together and yeah. have coffee and just kind of forecast the year and plan joint projects. During my year, we had a lot of joint projects uh, and I want to make sure we continue that. Sounds good. Um, it's good to hear too, you're not quite cracking a whip as hard as I was. When I was the assistant governor, I actually had my president's meeting starting in October. Oh, wow. We even had a Christmas party with them. Something to think about. The Christmas right. party, by the way, was a good one. They got together. We didn't talk any rotary. We just got together socially. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll let you know if Something I... to think about. I'm going to do it, and I'll let you know how it comes out. <laughs> Sounds good. Don't tell anybody it was my idea in case it goes bad. All right. <laughs> I'm leaving that up to you. Um, one last thing, real quick. Uh, we have a little bit of time here. In rotary, how are you going to share a passion for that? Give that opportunity to all of the members of Bakersfield. Real quick, in a one minute, two minute spot there. Just giving them opportunities to serve because I feel like that's the catalyst for a rotary moment. Okay. You know, we all get together and we all hang out and have drinks or just get to know each other on a personal level. But really it's when you serve together that you see that transformation in someone else's life that you don't know, you would have never known, and they will probably would have never known you, but through Rotary you were able to serve and change someone else's life. Um, and I think that that's the catalyst for Rotary Moments. The theme for my year was to create Rotary Moments. It was creating Rotary Moments, and that, that's really going to be the angle that I take moving forward for the rest of my Rotary career is just to help others have their Rotary Moments. Very good. Well, Samuel, thank you very much for joining us. I definitely appreciate your time. Of great, course. Great thank job. you so much I'm for looking, the invitation, Wade. Looking forward to hearing all the great things that you're going to be doing there. And keep us posted on that project. I you got it. It's a great one. You got it. And with that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, check out all the Rotary Clubs. Bakersfield looks like it's going to be a jumping place for Rotary next year. And with that, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Good job. Thanks, Wade.